Happy Friday, late morning. Mr. Steve, I got your crank back. We're gonna be putting this puppy together. Um, my goal for the weekend is to get the short block together. Uh, shouldn't be too hard. Got all the pistons on the rods. All of our bearing clearances are now checked, so we need to get the crank in, uh, get a piston and rod in, cam to greed, piston and valve clearance checked, um that sort of thing uh should go pretty easily and we're gonna get started right now i'm gonna get this crank in i'm gonna be using some maxima assembly lube assembly lube is assembly lube it keeps everything lubricated until you get the oil pump primed on the stand and that's pretty much its only job so I picked Maxima because it smells like cinnamon, and that's about it. Add a little bit more to this guy. Get it smoothed out. Goes on real slick on these coated bearings. Put some on our rear main seal. You don't want to dry a seal on startup. That would be a no-no. And uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll put the camera down so I can get this. Uh, these still FE cranks weigh about 75 pounds. So can't do it one-handed. I'll get her in there, though. Okay, I'm popping along here and um, putting the main caps on. One thing on uh, the BBM blocks, you have to pay careful attention to uh, the numbering on the caps. So you need to make sure that when you pull the block out of the crate that your machinist or you keep uh, keeps the caps. Well, I guess you can't really mix them up because they are stamped on each side. But if you notice, they've been stamped. Uh, this is number five. Obviously, that's the number one cap. So uh, you just have to pay careful attention. And, you know, you're flying through and you pick up a cap and it says, you know, number two and you want to put it here. But, uh, you know, if you're a machinist, um, line hone the block with the caps the way that they are stamped, then you need to make sure and put it back where uh it was another thing this is your rear main cap and that rear main seal drain right there um that usually doesn't matter what manufacturer the block is but that usually has some burrs down in it from the machining process so just take some time with a a file or a die grinder or a cartridge roll or whatever and make sure all that trash is cleaned out of there and here is your pre-flight checklist for the rear main cap. Lube on the bearing, lube on the seal, little bit of silicone at the parting line of the cap. Continuing to put the caps on. Uh, if you notice, I have not put the nut or the washer on this one. We're using a rear sump pan on this uh, build. So here's where the oil pump flange would be. Here's where the pickup would attach to. Um, several companies make fasteners to do this with. Um, obviously there wouldn't be enough studs sticking up to, to fasten this to. So we're gonna remove this stud. And um, Canton makes a, it's kind of more like a bolt, but it's, it's a bolt uh, with a, a stud sticking out the top of it um, for your pickup. But this particular piece comes, is made by ARP, and I get from Precision Oil Pumps. And um, gives you, it's, it's just a true ARP stud with just a little bit of uh, meat sticking up here so you can run. Uh, it comes with 12-point uh, fasteners, even for this little, little guy on top. 
and you can get your pickup mounted the correct way. All of our main caps are in and torqued. Our side bolts are in and torqued. I know um, I usually put silicone under these bolts uh, just by the rare chance that oil gets through there. I don't know. It's probably one of those things that you hear you should do, um, but you do it just because you hear that you should do it. So I don't know. I, I do it. Uh, it may not help anything. It may not hurt anything. I don't know. Um, if this was not a doweled main cap, you would set the thrust bearing. This is a doweled main cap, so you can pound till the cows come home and you will not move that thrust bearing. But make sure that you set your thrust bearing. Make sure you check crank thrust clearance. I have uh, seven thousandths. And um, everything is torqued in and uh, crank spins really freely. I, that, Maxima lube is, is very viscous, and you should also qualify that when you give the crank a rotation. Uh, you can use motor oil, and the things pretty much um, will spin by themselves, but when you throw any kind of really uh, thick assembly lube in there, it kind of feels like you're spinning in molasses, and that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna get this cleaned up, and I don't use side seals. I think it's a waste of time. Uh, they vary from block to block. Sometimes they fall in. Sometimes you have to shave them off to get them to fit. I use silicone, and that's what I'm going to do here. You shoot this cavity full, and if you got a good uh, caulking gun, the tip fits right down in there tight, and you shoot till it squirts out here and right there, and then you smooth it with your finger, and you're done. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So to keep the crank hooked to the cam, we're gonna be using this Koi's billet timing set along with this ARP cam bolt. And uh, always use a very hard and preferably thick washer. Uh, also, it's best to check your thread engagement uh, from here to here and compare that from here and see how many threads you get inside the cam. Obviously, this changes with uh, if you use a fuel pump eccentric or not. Uh, this engine will be fuel injected, so it will not use an eccentric. That's why the dowel pin is down below the surface of the gear. Uh, if we were to use a one-piece eccentric, that dowel would stick out a little bit to engage the eccentric. Cam thrust is checked. We got five thousandths, which is... Perfect, perfecto. Uh, remember when you are checking any in play, whether it be your crank or your cam, you don't want to pry to get clearance. You want this to have clearance at rest. So you want it to thunk, thunk. You don't want to get over here and start prying on stuff to gain clearance. It is what it is. If you don't have enough clearance, then you need to either uh, sand your thrust plate for your cam or sand your thrust bearing for your crank. All right, it is cam degree time, and uh, I've got one piston rod assembly already in. Now you can degree the cam off of any cylinder that you want. Uh, it's, for some reason, it's uh, standard operating procedure to take it off number one, but you can degree off of any cylinder, and it is often advantageous to do that just to see what your cam is doing all you need to do whatever cylinder that you're on you need to find true top, true top dead center for that cylinder and then zero your degree wheel and then start from there i'm gonna get set up we'll get this cam degreed all right cam is degreed if you want to see that process i have other videos that show how to do that uh the cam was pretty much spot on um less margin of error than I can correct with a timing set. So we're gonna call that good. And uh, I'm gonna move on to putting the timing cover on. And uh, since everything's buttoned up uh, there, I don't need to touch the gear or or anything else regarding the timing chain. And um, we'll, we'll get the timing cover on. So pre-flight pre checklist for a timing cover. Um, 
make sure your cam thrust clearance is checked. Make sure your cam dowel is where it needs to be in relation to the timing chain gear or the fuel pump eccentric or whatever you're using. The washer covers it so that it can't come out. And this bolt is torqued. This is a 7 16 bolt. Uh, it's a steel cam. I torque these at 65 pound feet. Uh, and we are clear to put timing cover on. Okay, making progress. Timing cover is on. Power bond race balancer. New steel balancer spacer. Lycans Motorsports adjustable billet aluminum pointer. And we just checked our uh, top bed center. It's really easy to dial this in uh, with this pointer. It's got about eight degrees of movement and really easy to set up. Got an ARP balancer bolt. And now it's time to knock in the rest of the pistons. All eight pistons knocked in. We are ready to rock and roll. Gonna flip her over on our top and torque some rod bolts. Nice coated, crown coated pistons reflect the heat into the chamber. It also protects the piston. So on a build uh, with this kind of integrity, um, we use very high end components. These are K1 rods and they torque at 30 pound feet plus 60 degrees. And you can also check them with a, a stretch gauge and they recommend the stretch to be six thousandths to six thousandths and four tenths. So I would call that six thousandths and four tenths. Um, I've checked a few more and uh, they're all stretching the amount that they're supposed to. So I am, uh, I am satisfied with all this. You also need to check your rod side clearance. Um, I would say a minimum is 12 thousandths. That's, a, that's about as uh, tight as I've ran. Most of these run, I don't know, 20, 25 thousandths or something like that. So just a feeler gauge in between each one. Uh, that ensures that you have adequate, cl adequate clearance as well as you didn't make uh, a bonehead mistake and put a rod cap on backwards or put the rod on backwards or something like that. Here's a look at the bottom end, showing off the K1 rods and the steel scat crank. And our stud for a pickup. I'm gonna call it quits here. I may uh, get the oil pump and the pickup on, but uh, hit my goal for the weekend and we'll hit it again next week. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so so that you don't, so that you don't miss out on the rest of this build. Um, 496 forced induction build using a BBM block and BBM cylinder heads with a Victor intake and a solid roller camshaft. Naturally aspirated, it should do, do okay even with the low compression, but the, uh, the big hair dryer will make the big difference. But uh, hit that like button. There's not much not to like about this. And hope you're having a good weekend. I'll see you next week.